Welcome to Electro Online, and now we're going to do the same two problems we did in the previous video, but in this case, we're going to use the FOIL method to factor the two problems. Because some people like the FOIL method better. All right, so here's a simple example, and the FOIL method means that we're going to take two FOILs and cross them. So think of two FOILs crossed like that. On the first FOIL, we're going to write the number in front of the x squared term. On the second FOIL, we're going to write the constant term, minus 15. And now you have to think about all the possible combinations. When you multiply two numbers together, you get a 1, of course. There's only one choice, 1 and 1. But on the negative 15, there's a number of choices. For example, you can have 15 and a negative 1, or a negative 15 and a 1. You could have a 3 and a 5. Of course, one of them must be negative. Or a positive 3 and 5, a negative 5. Or you could have a 5 and a negative 3 or a negative 5 and a 3. So those are all the possible combinations when you multiply the two numbers together to give you a negative 15. But we have some hints. We don't have to use all those combinations, try all those combinations, because we can see that the middle term is only a 2x. And if you use one of these big numbers, you probably will not get 2x for the middle term. Let me show you how that works. So again, draw the two foils, put the 1 and the 1 down here, and let's try 15 and negative 1. All right, so we multiply 1 times 15, that gives me 15. 1 times a negative 1 gives me minus 1. When we add them together, we get a positive 14, which is not the plus 2 I was looking for the, for, the, for the middle term. So that means that that combination doesn't work, so we get rid of the 15 and the minus 1. So now you try the next combination, the next and so forth, but again, you realize that the 1 and the minus 15 will probably not work as well. Okay, what else can we use? Well, how about the negative 3 and the positive 5? So negative 3, positive 5. So 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. When you add those two together, you get 2. Bingo! You found the right combination because that's what you're looking for, which means negative 3 and 5 is the proper combination, and therefore when we factor, we can then simply write 1x minus 3 and 1x plus 5 will give you the proper combination to factor this. So here we can write it like such. So we have 1x minus 3, and we have 1x plus 5. And that's how we use a FOIL method to factor a problem like that. Now we go ahead and solve the quadratic equation. When you multiply these two together, you get 0. That means that either 1 or the other equals 0. So x minus 3 equals 0, or x plus 5 equals 0, which means that x must equal 3, or x must equal negative 5. All right, that's how we use the FOIL method there. Now let's try to tackle a more complicated problem and see if the FOIL method works for that as well. So let me make some room here. Okay, so we do the same thing again. We use the two FOILs, like so. On top of the first FOIL, you write the coefficient of the x squared term, 28. And on top of the second, you put the minus 15, the constant term. And realizing now that the middle term kind of decides which way you want to go. So since the middle term is a minus 1x, that means when you multiply everything together, the numbers should be relatively close to each other. So using a possible combination of 28 and 1 and minus 15 and positive 1 probably is not a good way to go because you probably will never end up with a negative 1. You want to use the combinations that are pretty close to each other. So the possible combinations would be 14 and 2 and 7 and 4, and I would be leaning towards the 7 and 4 because those numbers are closer together. Again, we're looking for middle term of minus 1. On the right side, 3 and 5, and of course one of them has to be negative, so negative 3 and 5, or positive 3 and negative 5, or positive 5 and negative 3, or negative 5 and a positive 3, those are the more likely candidates. And I would say that 4 and 7, or 7 and 4, and one of these combinations will probably give me the right way to factor that problem. So let's try them one by one. So let's go for 7 and 4, and let's try our first combination, negative 3 and 5. So 4 times negative 3 is a minus 12, 7 times 5 is 35. When I add those together, Mm, doesn't look like it. That would be a positive 23, which is not a negative 1, so that was not the right combination. All right, so negative 3 and 5 is not one of our possibilities, so let's get rid of that. Our next combination would be 3 and negative 5. 3 and negative 5, so 7 times negative 5 is minus 35. 
4 times 3 is 12. When we add them together again, we don't get a negative 1. So that's also not a good combination. All right. Third, we have a 5 and a negative 3. 5 and negative 3. So 4 times 5 is 20. 7 times negative 3 is minus 21. When I add them together, minus 1. And bingo, that's the right one because I have a minus 1x for the middle term. So this is the correct combination, 5 and negative 3. So I can factor this as a 7x plus 5 and a 4x minus 3. So this factors to a 7x plus 5 times a 4x, oop, don't want that, minus 3 equals 0. And now we can go ahead and complete the problem. When we multiply two things together, we get 0. That means that either 7x plus 5 equals 0 or 4x minus 3 is equal to 0. And solving each one of them separately, we can write 7x equals minus 5 or x equals minus 5 divided by 7. Here, we can say or 4x equals 3 or x equals 3 over 4. And so that is the solution to our second quadratic equation. And you can see that the full method can be a very straightforward, easy way to factor something that's relatively complicated.